Welcome to problem three. Here you're given a lot of information, so I'll parse this with you. You're given a function phi, which is the total number of positive integers, less than n, which are relatively prime. Uh, less than n might be helpful too. Uh, relatively prime is the key word. Where have we seen this before? We've seen this with the FLT, right? Uh, where, given this, you need to know that a and p are relatively prime. Great, and then you're given an additional property if they're relatively prime, which is really helpful. Uh, M and N, that is. So P, uh, if P is a prime number, what does primality entail? Primal uh, primality entails that um, they're uh, the only positive divisors of P are 1 and P. And relatively prime entails that GCD of a certain number with P is 1. Great. So why do these two come together in the first problem? Well, let's enumerate out the numbers from 1 to P. Now, fact 1, the only factors that P can share is uh, factors R1 and P. Fact two, uh, the numbers between one um, and P, if X is between one and P, X cannot share the factor P. So given the factors of x, right, factors x and the factors of p, which is just 1 and p, if you try to find the intersection of these two sets, you'll realize that the only um, element in that set will be 1, including if this x was 1. So clearly, all these numbers before p have GCD um, of 1, and so all these numbers are relatively prime with p. And how many numbers are there? Well, if you just take p out, you have p minus 1 numbers. And this is excluding p. So therefore, um, phi of p equals p minus 1. Great. For part two, we're just looking at phi of pk, and so um, we need to find the total number of positive integers less than pk that are relatively prime to pk. Now, what factors does pk have? Um, basically, the only factors that pk has is 1 and p repeated k times. And this is because um, p, p is prime. So P has no factors of its own. So P has no factors of its own except 1 and P. So the numbers that are not relatively prime are those share a factor, right, a factor uh, with pk, um, factor with pk that is not equal to 1, so which means, they, which implies that they are multiples of p, because as long as there is a p in there, then um, we don't have a relatively prime number. So now, uh, the Multiples of p are, of course, 1 times p, 2 times p, and so on and so forth until you hit p k minus 1 times p. And so there are, of course, p to the k minus 1 of them. And if you start with all of the numbers l less than pk and subtract the multiples out, you get 
this many numbers as your answer. It's a pretty simple argument. Um, the only trick here is you can't uh, manually count the uh, factors because uh, you're not guaranteed to have p, uh, sorry, k factors. So the counting argument doesn't work. Now uh, I'm going to discuss part 3. Part 3 is actually really simple. So A of B of P, uh, we already determined B of P to be equal to P minus 1. So we can do a basic substitution. A of P minus 1, of course, in mod P is equal to 1 mod p, and this is from the FLT, and we can use that because p is prime, since p is prime. And so, yeah, that's pretty much your answer. In part 4, we have a really interesting expression here. b is this huge expression, so phi of b um, is equal to phi of p1 alpha 1 times dot 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 times p of k alpha k. And what we realize is since these p's are all prime factors, they don't share any factors other than 1. And so, of course, GCD of all of these is um, pairwise is 1. And so we can break this um, multiplication apart. Dot 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 times phi of pk alpha k because um, p, uh, i, p, j don't share factors as they are both prime. OK. And so then, um, if we take a to the power of b of b, then we get um, a of b of pi 1 alpha, uh, p1 alpha 1, <laughs> I'm thinking about pi right now, but that's not right, pi k alpha k, and um, we can simplify each, we can evaluate each of these function calls because we solved them in part 2. Remember, the solution we got in part 2 was p of k minus 1, p minus 1. So uh, each p here is specific, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, we realize we get p of k minus 1, p1 of k minus 1, p1 minus 1, times all the other random things. Um, and this is uh, a multiplied exponent, so it actually looks like you're raising this to v of p2 alpha 2 um, times dot 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 and so forth. So this expression um, Remember, we have mod of p1 because we're matching the i with um, whatever the prime factor is, right? And so if we just isolate this term, then by Fermat's little theorem, you have this p1 minus 1 mod p. This whole thing simplifies to 1 by the FLT. Uh, and we know that p1 is prime. So this whole thing will be congruent to 1 mod p1. Now this generalizes to any other um, mod, mod pi because multiplication is commutative. Um, is commutative. And the pi are all prime. So you can use the FLT. Now this is just a conceptual way of going about this proof. If you want a more formal proof, uh, feel free to look at the um, written homework solutions, but hopefully this makes things a bit more clear for you guys. Onwards to the next problem.